Come everybody. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. We appreciate you very, very much for listen. A lot of things are taking place right this minute. Watch this. We have a lot of things taking place, especially uh, you know this 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 has been uh, one of the best uh, conferences we have had. Just imagine, imagine. It just seemed like we were in church, you know, and we're coming back very, very, very soon. And in fact, churches are still open. Churches are still open. We have a lot of branches open. A lot of branches open. That means the Lord has been faithful and we are grateful. Something good is about to take place. I want you to raise your hands wherever you are so that we get you into a mood of revelation so that you can actually get this. Paluzian Crodica la Monza Tia Pasca, Leju Ancrafole Tia Tascor di la Mohoncretia Tasso, Perigusa Ancrafatusia, Lejuna Ancrida Gila Mahan Kete Custica no Mahante. In the name of Jesus, let revelation go out and walk my tongue of leash, replace it with the tongue of the Spirit, so your people can get a word in due season that can affect their life. A word with efficacy in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Wasn't it brilliant? Wasn't it brilliant? Wasn't it brilliant to to have to have Bishop McClendon, Dr. Jamal Bryant, Prophet Jerome Fernando, uh, Prophet Leon Dupree, just giving out the word of God to you. And it's, it's always brilliant to understand that the Bible itself, and I've been saying this, this verse over and over again, that Jesus was ministering, and the healing unction was present to heal. Just imagine the man is preaching a different message, and yet the healing unction is operating. In other words, it's so easy for you to miss your miracle because you think what the man of God is preaching is not the real thing. Mm. Uh, I've heard so many times when we prophesy and we prophesy some few things and someone says, I'm just waiting for you to, to get to the real story. <laughs> Come on. And we have to be forced by pressure to actually get to the real story that they like. But that story has already been solved by the things that Right. Being said, so it is easy for you to miss it because you might fail to receive the beginning of this message and wait for your story to be covered. Mm. Whereas I can be talking about legs and your hands are getting healed. Come on, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's more like a buy one, get one free thing. Come on. But this one is in everything is free. All right. So get one, get another one free. Now, listen, I want you to get to the book of Exodus and I'm, I'm talking about dimensions of the spirit. Amen. I, I wish you could um, really understand that when we set up the awakening as the Lord had prompted us to do so, it is actually an endeavor. In other words, it is um, a, a way we are trying by all means to get you to be awakened in your spirit. Mm. A certain jump starting of your spirit so that you begin to go back to your first love. You go back to the original place. That place when you got to God, you were just you and God for hours. That's the awakening for us. Amen. So when, when, we, when we get to this point, I just want you to be ready for the message that's coming to you. Just be ready. Begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to pray. Pray in other tongues. Pray in other tongues. Pray in other tongues. And you understand why we say these things. Pray in other tongues wherever you are. Means Pesukira Bangta Beronon Zila Kuja Kira Monkla Ankredigisia. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. It is very, very paramount that we understand that the Spirit of the Lord wants us to get to another level. And the level He wants us to get to. It is a level that generals only have reached. You see, you can think generals are those gray-haired old men and men that have spent time with God in the sense of years, but that's not so. 
We are all in the army of God. We are soldiers in the army of God. But one thing that makes a soldier a general is the, the time he spent in the civilization of the spirit. There is the civilization of the spirit and the civilization of the spiritual realm. And when you spend time with God, having experience with God, it's your experiences with, the, with, the, with an unending oracle we call God that makes you a general. Uh, uh, maybe you're missing what I'm about to say and what I've just said. Uh, the reality is when you are in the spirit, you aim, you look at what is about to come and you look at what has just been said. You can predict what I'm about to say, but what I just said. So, so you you, you, you understand that there are journeys and there are areas where only men of the spirit, men of prayer have actually gened into. Mm. And those guys can just stand here and something will happen and you wonder what is taking place. Uh, I want you to, to get this. And time and experience can actually make you question what you are here for. Hear this. I want you to get to the book of Exodus before I start ministering. And verse number, chapter number 8. Let's start from verse number 1. I know it's a long uh, thing, but you, you stay with us. Stay with us. Verse number 1 of Exodus chapter number 8. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go. Mm, mm. That they may save me. Notice the reason for going was to save. So God doesn't just deliver you for delivering you. He delivers you for a purpose in order for you to save him. Uh, God is a good investor. He knows exactly why he is doing that. You know, so many people just want to be rich for the sake of getting rich. Uh, you hear me in a few minutes. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly. We shall go up and come into thine house and unto thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and unto the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thy ovens and upon thy... Listen, thy, thy divan. Watch this. You have got a room that is full of frogs, right? And if you jump to 14... Jump to 14. And they gathered them together upon the hips and the land stack. Watch this. Are you getting this? Yes. Now, now watch this. Verse number 15. But when Pharaoh saw there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened unto them as the Lord has said. Now watch this. Are you here? Yes. And the Lord said unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod. Here is mm -hmm. the part where I want you to listen to. Stretch out thy rod. And smite the dust, just the soil, smite the dust. Mm, are you getting this now? Sure. And smite the dust and of the land, and that it may become lies. Mm. Throughout all the land of Egypt. Notice these were not flying. These were on people's bodies. Come on. The dust became lies. Whoa. You get it, you get it. <laughs> Everything that the that 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 Moses would do, that magicians would copy. Listen carefully. Everything that they would do, magicians would copy. God and Moses would create a miracle. The magicians, Janus and Jambres, as Paul brings it in the New Testament. And you can ask me where he got it. It's a different. They are only places where men of prayer can get to. <laughs> Nobody ever wrote Janus and Jambres. It's just... This man got it in the New Testament. Even the Old Testament leaves it. Moses doesn't mention the names. Come on. Whoa. Come on. Here it is. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lies in men. And in beast, all the dust of the land became lies throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lies, but they could not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. I know you're missing this now. Everything that God said to Moses do, the magicians did. When it came to this one, this one, they failed. Notice what they did. Then the magicians ran to Pharaoh. They knew they had failed their occupation. I don't know if you're here yes, because we're about to fly. On, uh, they failed their own occupation mm. to the point that they went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, uh, we, have, we have a confession. The rules were set the right way. Uh, you know, when you are in the MMA and, and, and you are in the boxing and, 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 you know, World Boxing Federation and people are fighting and Mayweather is in there and you are kicking. Mm. Mm. So they went there and said, Pharaoh, uh, this is no longer a fair game. 
This man is just used. Watch this now. Watch this said. And then magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Oh. The magician said, no, no, no. We were copying all this time. The man was playing fair with us. Until this time. This time now the man is using the finger of God. There is now a difference in rules. We were operating on the same step. We were on the same level. We were doing the same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2020 was the same thing. Yeah. We might have broken records, a lot of them. But it was on this level plane. But this year, I'm moving to another level. Where I'm no longer using the rules as you use. I'm using the finger of God. He said, don't, don't blame us. Don't fire us from our jobs. Uh, the, 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 there's a gear he changed into. Is the finger of God. Now, the finger of God is not really the finger of God as you would think. And if you read the book of Matthew, it's so amazing. The book of Matthew, chapter number 12, it says, If I, Jesus said, If I, by a finger of God, cast out devils. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. If, if you look at Matthew and if you look at Luke, Luke uses this. Let's, let's read. Let's read. Let's read Matthew right now. Go to Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 12, 27 and 28. I want you to see it before I proceed because something is about to take place. I want you to see something quickly. Matthew 12, 27. Mm -hmm. And if I by Beelzebub cast mm. out devils, mm -hmm. by whom do your children cast them out? Yes. Therefore they shall be your judges. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God. Now he calls it in Matthew the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Look, look 11, 19. He's talking about Beelzebub. Then he goes in. And says, by the Spirit of God. Watch that. Luke 11, verse 19. Mm. And if I by Beelzebub. That means it's the same story. Yes. Luke sees it. Matthew sees it. He has the same thing. Mm -hmm. Matthew calls it the Holy Ghost. Mm. The magicians call it the finger of God. Mm. <laughs> but Matthew is hearing Jesus saying, this is, the, this is the Holy Ghost. But look what does he say? And if I by Beelzebub. Cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them mm. out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Mm. Verse 20. But if I, with the finger of God. Watch this. <laughs> These are two guys that were present. Luke, of course, is not present. He's actually hearing from somebody. He's reporting what happened on the same day. Matthew was present. Mm. Matthew says he said the spirit of God. Luke said he said it. The finger of God. In other words, the finger of God and the Holy Ghost. Same thing. But notice when the, when, when, the, when the magicians saw it, they said, no, not in this time. In this time, the Holy Ghost is not res resident in anyone. But this man has gone into the New Testament oh. before it arrived. <laughs> he just got an awakening before anything else. And now he's using the finger of God. Something we can't use. We are not even allowed to use. But this man has gone in. See, there is a certain level of awakening. Where when you get the awakening, you can start using different things. You are, you are, ah, yeah, you have, you have, you have avenues that can open for you that no man has ever opened. No man. Doors that you can, you can open. You are looking for a job. You are 19. I told you. You can be 200 looking for a job. And you go for a conference like this. For, for an interview. You see other ones. 199. Don't say, oh, God, please help me. No. You are using the finger of God in that moment. Amen. Start to pray for the 199 where they will get jobs because this one is yours. You didn't hear what I'm saying. So, so, so you can get this to understand that there is a finger of God. But the Bible tells us about the hand of God. The Bible tells us you are alive right now. You are hearing me right now. The Bible tells us about the finger of God. But while this is talking about the finger of God, it also talks about the hand of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then it talks about the, the legs of God because it says, and the end is his footstool. Now, now we have a problem because if the earth is footstool, when we know there are over 50,000 galaxies mm -hmm. uh, and the universe is ever expanding, so if God's foot or feet can fit on the earth, then we save a very small God. Mm, that's right. Mm. That's right. Because our earth can enter into the sun thousands and thousands of times. Uh, now, 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 if our God's feet can fit on the earth, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Because we never know if there is another God that can come from somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And claim that the Milky Way is his footstool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but when you understand that the leg of God is actually a dimension of the spirit. Amen. 
go. Oh, they didn't get that. They missed that. Go, go, go. It is a dimension of the spirit. A dimension. A dimension of the spirit. That when you get it, you realize that's not what he's saying. It says in the hand of God. Then he says, in the arm of God. Then he says, in the outstretched arm of God, he delivered his people. His outstretched arm. But notice when he's using this part. Then he used an outstretching. That means the finger is now closer to you. So when God is using the finger of God, he is using the epikaizo, the boiling point of his power. So the magicians met it and said, hey, we have a problem. This man is now using the, the boiling point of God's power. This is not fair game. This man is no longer Moses. He is God. Uh, uh, I think I can leave this now. But I can go back a little bit back and at and, and, and a time uh, when, when, when God began to speak to, 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 to Moses and, 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 and as my, my friend Jamal would say and God, and God sent a text message to, to, to Moses and <laughs> Moses checked his mobile phone and said, uh, God is speaking. And God said, from Today onwards, you are God. Come on, come on. <laughs> so when the magicians thought they were fighting an ex-prince, mm. they were now facing the real God, Hallelujah. who was using his own finger. Oh. Come on. I decree and declare right now by the same token of this awakening that from now onwards you are using the finger of God, the boiling point of God's power, not just the normal power, the boiling point of God's power. Something about you is about to change. Nah, 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 nah. I don't care whether they use aircraft or, 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 or witchcraft. Come on. Somebody is delivered by this message as I'm speaking to you now. I, I was speaking to somebody. In the morning, I said, don't you understand what is happening around the world? Mm. That you can't realize that at this hour, the Bible tells us a specific thing. That I shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Come on now. What the world is used to because there is no awakening that is happening. Mm. We are used to the Holy Ghost with no fire. Mm. He says he shall have his winnowing fork. Do you understand what that means? Come on. The painful part of it that when somebody speaks against the Holy Ghost, they suffer. Ooh, come on. So we are lovey dovey. Mm. But because of the awakening. Mm, come on. Oh, by correction. You did. Death is in four ways. <laughs> there are four types of death. Come on. One means cessation of life, another one, no. Another one is the process of dying. In the same Bible, did he not say to Adam, if you eat this tree, you will surely die? That's right. Yeah. When for hundreds and hundreds of years, the man was still alive. Yeah. Why? For hundred, why is it so? Because the death that is spoken of is not the death you think. It's not a physical death. Come on. Man will begin to dry off. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Oh my God. Senses will begin to dry off. Hey. Come on. And suddenly somebody's just talking nonsense. Okay. Somebody's just not. It's now useless. Come on. Where is your money? Money is gone. Watch this now. But by the Spirit of God, you shall see something by this awakening. Yeah. This awakening is a setup. Come on. I, something is happening right now as we speak. What I want you to, to get to. Watch. This is the finger of God. has hardened and he hearkened not unto them. As the Lord has said. You would. So there is still going to be opposition when you use the finger of God. Mm. Especially when you use, but notice what the Bible, how the Bible explains it into a duty to harden. The heart was softened by the finger. Mm. Again. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Hey. You say if you're using it possible for the same people you have defeated, the same radiant, he will make it come back again. Mm. And the dying, they, they, yeah. mm. You're about to hear something. You're about to hear something. But notice here, notice something that is very profound. That there is an outstretched hand. Then there is the arm of God. Then there is the finger of God. These are dimensions. It's not really this. It's a dimension. That God can use a certain level of power. And then can extend that power. And can extend the power. Yeah, you're missing that. You're missing that. You're missing that now. Are you getting this? Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So, so watch this. Watch this. So you have, you have a certain level of men of God that haven't understood it. 
And so they, some of us have gotten a hold of this thing mm. and knew that there are dimensions, have known already that there are dimensions of men. Mm. Oh, you missed it. You missed it. I don't want, to, I don't want you to, to miss this because he, he, he got for you to, to catch what I'm about to say because, because it's, it's, um, it's so important that you really saw some. So, yeah. <laughs> some are atmospheres. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, so, some wait for the waters to be troubled. Oh. Some are the, and some dimensions are those that have sent the dimensions of those that have sent the troubler of the water to trouble the waters. And some men of God are water itself. Oh. You, you're missing that. Come on. Mm. Some like Elisha would say, do you want me to prophesy? Bring a minstrel so that I can sing. Mm. So they sing, I can prophesy. Mm. Maybe from his father Elijah said, bring a minstrel so I can sing. Oh. They can sing. You wake me up anytime. Oh. It's tea time. I prophesy any minute. Why? Because some men need. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Some men need that music. Right. Some of us don't need the music. Oh. You can wake me up in my sleep. Oh. I'll be able to say, can I prophesy? Why? Oh. There are some that would need a minstrel. Some don't need a minstrel. Some atmosphere is simply a knowledge of have you been with God and can you be shaken in that thing? Hallelujah. Hmm. Come on. You, you, don't, you don't understand this. And, and before I, I get to you partaking of enough, uh, it is important that you understand in the civilization of the spirit, in the civilization of the spirit, the citizens in there have to spend considerable time with this unending oracle. When I say unending oracle, I'm talking about God who is always prophetic and always prophesying. There is no day God is not prophetic. There is no day he ceases prophecy and there is no day he stops prophesying. So he's an unending oracle. Uh, now, 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 if he's an unending oracle, that means he's speaking every day. We just rarely hear him. Mm. And if we rarely hear him, the problem is on us and not on him. The problem of the spirit is not the, the, the outlet. It is the inlet, the one who is able to receive it. Mm. Ah, now hear this, hear this, hear this. Now you say, man of God, but, but, but how, how do I know who it is that I need to be, to be, to be following and to be with? I, I will come back to that later. But I want you to, to understand something very, very profound. Mm -hmm. That, that in this dimension of the spirit, uh, you're about to miss this, but I don't want you to miss it. In this dimension of the spirit, if we, if we read um, the book of Acts, we understand that there is an awakening that took place among the disciples and the apostles. I don't want you to watch um, maybe five more minutes and I'll be, I'll be done. I'll be out of your hair and, and, and watch this. There is a dimension in the spirit, but that dimension can only be entered by people of prayer. Yeah, when I say this, it seems like uh, prayer again. We are back to prayer. This is the reason why most of my books are on prayer. Mm -hmm. You would expect them to be on prophecy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people always ask me, what's my secret? Just go on to my library and figure out what do I write about the most. It becomes so easy. It becomes so easy. Can, can we just uh, put the... The thing on right now. So I'm, I'm coming back to you right now. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Stay right where you are. Stay where you are. I'm coming back to you right now. The Awakening Conference 2021 with Bishop Clarence McClendon. God has ordained the coronavirus pandemic to be a wonder to you and not a plague. He has ordained it to skip over your house. He has ordained it not to touch your children. He has ordained it so he can introduce himself to people who thought you were crazy for trusting. Dr. Jamal Bryant. God told me to tell you he has given you the perfect balance that no matter what waves come against you, you are not going to flip out. You are not going to go crazy. You are not going to reduce yourself. You are perfectly equipped for what God has given you. Prophet Jerome Fernando. The world was getting ready for a new normal. They said wearing masks is a new normal. They said lockdown is a new normal. If you can believe in the world in new normals, why can't you believe in the real word of God and the new normals of the word of God?
You can be healed and that healing can be your new normal. Christ Jesus brings a new normal into our life. The prophet Leon Dupree. The enemy wants you to be silent, but God is saying, no, 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 I've called you this decades to speak with your words with power. That your words will become a weapon towards the enemy. Your words will become a weapon towards sickness. Your words will become a weapon towards joblessness. Your words will become a weapon towards any curse. Prophet Hubert Angel. Somebody here, under the influence of my voice. So the days of men are over. And are the days of the gods. When those who are born of God are going to shine, those who are born of the Spirit are going to show who they are. This is the time we are faced with. And remember, rapture is taking place any time from now. Rapture is imminent. Get ready for the... All right. <laughs> it is important to understand. It is important to understand. Tell somebody we are back right now. In fact, share this broadcast right this minute. Share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. Listen, when a dimension calls, that's what you do. Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. There are dimension in the spirit. Watch this. There are dimension in the spirit where you can actually understand that you are now at another level. And I want to, uh, I really want to kind of uh, bring it down nicely to you. It is, it is a dimension of the spirit that you can no longer play with. You can't joke with. You can't, you can't do nothing to. A dimension of the spirit. Something so profound, so big that nothing, nothing can stop it. I want you to, to read, read, read again the book of the book of uh, Exodus, chapter number eight. The book of Exodus, and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'll be with you just now, right now, right now. From Exodus chapter number eight, verse number eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, from verse number fifteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he mm-hmm. hardened his heart. And hearken not unto them, as the Lord had said. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, Mm -hmm. that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in men and in beasts. All the dust of the land became lice. Everything is taking place. And the Spirit of the Lord is alive. But the Spirit of the Lord in those days, He's only inhabiting, watch this now, He's only inhabiting the priest, the prophet, and the king. Mm-hmm. Come on. They are seeing it happening that even if you read chapter number 7, you realize something felt so profound that they dropped their snakes, uh, their sticks that became snakes. Mm. And it says they dropped their sticks, mm. their rods. Notice it's plural, rods. Mm-hmm. Je mon yes. Je mon they dropped their rods. Yes. Are you getting this? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Are you getting this? So they drop their rods. And when they drop their rods, what begins to happen? What begins to happen is very, very simple. One rod of Moses. Mm. The Bible says, and the rod of Moses swallowed up their rods. Mm -hmm. Notice right there, right there you missed it. He didn't say the snake of Moses. Says the rod. God knew this is a battle of sticks. Oh, come on. What they are seeing is snakes. Listen, your problem that you think is high. Trust me. There are things right now. There are people right now in some areas who desire your biggest problem. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. Bring it sir. Imagine you take somebody right now who is experiencing the worst calamity on earth. And your problem of not finding a dress in your wardrobe Ooh. is stressing you out. <laughs> that person would say, I need this problem that is. Mm-hmm. Come on, that's right. I don't care who says what. You're going to see something today. Hallelujah. So the dimension of prayer that I want to bring you into is not a, a small thing. You know, you can do five minutes. I remember way back, I would put an alarm system and put 20 minutes, put 30 minutes for it to, to, to ring after 40 minutes. And I will pray and pray and wonder, is my phone working? And you check it. 
three minutes. Hey. What? <laughs> you check your phone and say, what's up? I know it's your testimony already. <laughs> you wonder, well, is my phone dead? No, I hadn't gotten into the spirit. Mm. I hadn't gotten into that level, the level of the spirit. The level of the spirit where I can actually say to myself, God, I'm now with you in one location. Watch this. I want you to see what a dimension of the spirit can do when you decide to take an awakening that we're talking about. Mm. Listen, your experience with God right now, your experience with God right now, and you say you love him so much, is not tested. Mm. It hasn't been tested. <laughs> Listen, John was there. Watch this. John was there. When the Holy Ghost descended upon Jesus, John was present. John, John, the same John who was actually resurrected by Jesus. Six months in the pregnancy, six months in the pregnancy. Never moved, not even kicked one day. Only when Mary arrived and said, the baby inside your womb has kicked. Come on. Are they getting this? The man who was resurrected, a forerunner of Jesus, second coming, coming, second coming. Why am I saying second coming? Because first coming is Jesus. It's God on earth. Mm. He didn't get that. Come on. Now, now from there, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's why even the, the, the rapture is not called second coming. Mm. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. You're getting the point. Mm -hmm. yeah, now, now, watch this now. Watch this. Are you here? Yes, sir. Imagine Moses. Imagine, imagine John the Baptist, sorry. Imagine John the Baptist is right there baptizing people and he sees the Holy Ghost descend on Jesus mm. the Holy Ghost himself yeah. like a dove mm. not dove he descended on Jesus mm. the man is there he hears a sound from heaven but when pressure was on him the Bible says he sent his disciples from prison oh. say go and ask God is he God you know, you, I know you're missing this. You're missing what I'm trying to say. <laughs> when the prophet who hears God starts asking God if he's real God. He said, oh, shall we wait for the other one? Which other one do you want to wait for, John? Because there was some pain that moved his faith. A man who hears from God, he knew. I'm on eighth year because God sent me. Now the God that he sent me is right standing there. He saw even people dragging the sheep to the mark, to the to the to the to the slaughterhouses of the priests, what? And they said, Whoa, whoa, whoa what is happening? He said, Behold, he pointed at Jesus. He looked at the sheep and he pointed, he told people, focus on Jesus. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, <laughs> which takes away that one covers the sins of the world. But this Jesus I'm baptizing takes away the sins of the world. Come on, come on, come on. So some people don't get it when they hear, behold. Mm -hmm. Awaken. In other words, open your eyes. Forget. Don't look at that one. That one is the natural one. It's for atonement. It only covers. It doesn't take the sins. But this one takes away the sins. Then he got into a pressure. He wanted to do marriage counseling. And uh, when he was a prophet to baptize, and, and he changed his ministry to marriage counseling. You know how many people we have now that just open an account on YouTube and, and, and on Facebook, and they are now apostles, Apostle Bazooka, uh, Apostle Google, Prophet Google, you know. Uh, you, you know. And you wonder, where did you get your calling? I, I, I'm not saying there is a prophet Google there I'm talking about. I'm just giving names out there. Uh, if there is a prophet Google there and he's genuine, very sorry. Now, now watch this. Uh, listen, to think this man can actually be anointed, and he is anointed. But when he moves his ministry from baptizing to counseling, marriage counseling, watch this. Watch how important it was that the king was willing to give half of his kingdom for his, for his head. Mm. The daughter danced. Said, mm. so ask what you want. I can give you half of the kingdom. That means John the Baptist was worth yeah. more than half yeah, of the kingdom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Come on. That's A prophet right. is important. Yeah, yeah. Come on. This one, this John was not born again. Hey, how much? This John the Baptist was not born again, not one, not one time. And yet he's worth half of the kingdom. Don't play with a man who can speak the word of God. Like Pastor Chris said, my father said something very, very important. He said something very profound. 
You see, it is a very dangerous thing to fight a man who is still being used by God, who is fully in his ministry, that when he stands in front of the people, he can still see. He can still hear. That's right. He can still heal. That's right. He can still deliver revelation. That's right. Said very dangerous. You are fighting with God. He is there with half of the kingdom. He is in the kingdom, sitting there in prison. He's the pressure of death. He had rumor. You are about to die. He, he said, ah, go and ask him. Is he the real God? <laughs> is, is he alone? No. Even when it comes to Jesus, what did he say to his disciples? Who do people say that I am? He knew they had shifted their mindset. Oh, yes, yes. Then when they said, uh, some say, some say, he knew they were now no longer straight. They were now shifting. Pressure can make you shift. Time can make you shift. Your experience can make you shift. It will expose who you are. I always say this. Money does not, amplif does not change your character. It amplifies your character. If you were stingy, <laughs> there we are. So we said, no, he has a lot of money, he's stingy, he's stingy, I think he should be broke. No. When he was broke, he was also stingy. <laughs> the money just made it amplified. Like I always say to people, uh, there, is, there is no, uh, racism has actually gone down. So what? <laughs> yeah, it has gone down. Look at the statistics. It has actually gone down. It's just being filmed nowadays. Mm -hmm. oh, they didn't get that. <laughs> that means it looks like it's now more. No, it's being filmed. It's on camera now. Okay. Was it there before? Yeah, it was there. There were no cameras. Mm -hmm. Now hear this, hear this, hear this. When he turned to the people, to his disciples, to talk about the people, he then turned to the disciples, knowing exactly that they also shifted. He said, who do you say that I am? God knows your, your experience can shift you from me. Mm -hmm. But it is men of prayer that have gone deeper in the things of God that can actually say, I'm Stagnant here. When I mean stagnant, I mean I'm steady. I don't stagger at the promise of God because I'm in prayer. Prayer builds character. Amen. A man of prayer is not a man of many words. <laughs> I like what dear Modi would say. They would oppose him for his English sometimes, and he said, No, look, don't worry about my English. Uh, as I'm using my spoken English, I just use it for you. But as for my pure, pure English with good grammar, I, I use it for God in prayer. <laughs> so when I mess it up here in public, don't worry. But in prayer, I speak perfect English. <laughs> That's when you understand people have actually gone with God to a certain location where you cannot move them. Whatever you do does not change them. Nothing changes. Now, now the, the, the question then remains, if you want to be in a certain level of awakening, always understand this. You have to convince the devil. God is already convinced. Mm. I was speaking to somebody very important to me today, and, I was, and like I always say to, to you guys, um, I always speak about, when I talk about doctrines that I'm teaching uh, our um, OIT, we always talk about doctrines that are non-negotiable and doctrines that are negotiable. That's right. I know God prospers me. In fact, I'm not a prosperity preacher. No. I'm a preacher who is prospering. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say that, you can't convince me. You can have 29 bulldogs and, 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 and shotgun and, and five versions of the Bible uh, with a subtraction and, the, and, and, and every other earlier manuscript. You will not convince me God wants me poor. You will not. Mm -hmm. That is my non-negotiable. I'm not moving. Mm -hmm. The devil went to God and said, God, um, Job, look at what God said. He said, have you seen? He, went, he is the one who started boasting. Have you seen my servant Job? And the devil said, does he fear you for nothing? In other words, God is convinced Job loves him. But the devil is not convinced. Oh. So the issue is Job had managed to convince God, but he had not managed to convince the devil. Mm. So our biggest problem is we convince God we love him. But we haven't convinced the devil will not leave God. Uh. So some of the battles we are fighting is only because we have not convinced the devil. So the devil keeps on trying. Until you give him what you call your worst case. Devil, take your best shot. I'm still standing. 
When the bar, when, 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 when the boss says your work is done, God is still God. Amen. When the bank account is no money, God is still God. Amen. When the doctor says you have cancer, God is still God. Yeah. When the doctor says you have got a disease that cannot be cured, incurable disease, God is still God. When my bank account is on zero, God is still God. It's not changed by money. It's not changed by health. It's not changed by lack of it. It's only something that I tell you is never going to be negotiated. God is God. Now hear this. Hear this. So when you get to your place of prayer, that's why I like the awakening. It's not funny jokes. It's not entertainment. It's about the spirit of God. Yes, it's like right. catching the, this wave, catching the wave, catching it now. Amen. Have you noticed, have you noticed in countries, Southern Africa, ministers are dying. Diseases like one week after the other. Every week is a relative of somebody who died. Very close. And, and you see, at first, it would seem like it is simply, <laughs> I'm about to say something. It would say la seem like it is simply COVID as they call it. But the reality is, it's not COVID. This thing. There is COVID. Okay. Remember, we don't deny COVID is there. That's right. <laughs> but there are other diseases who are now killing people like oh, 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 did they die of COVID? no it's another disease what's happening do you notice New Year's Eve I mentioned this year is going to be one of the most difficult years sure that you survive only if you have the God if you are of the God kind you survive yes, it is the survival of those that are in the spirit that walk in the spirit now hear this now hear this and hear this quickly hear this why are people dying like this? Why is it happening? And you think they are stupid? You think you are exempt because you are so clever? Remember this disease that they call COVID, you can't see it. You can't. So you are clever. You're not catching it. This cancer, have you seen it? No. If you look at cancer using a microscope, you know these machines, these powerful machines, it's one of the most beautiful viruses you can see. Now they didn't get it. It is colorful. Mm. Hmm. Do you think, do you think it's missing you because you're so clever? Brothers and sisters, there is a way. There is a way. There is a way you can be assured of one thing. That I've got in a certain awakening and I don't fear nothing. Oh, I like when, when, when the Bible says, fear not. <laughs> Let me tell you the revelation that it gives you there. Say, fear not. And fear not is written 365 times in the Bible. Do you know what that means? Every day of the year, fear not. Now, if the Bible says, fear not, in other words, God is simply telling you, there is nothing to fear out there. Nah, see, it's, it seems like a simple statement, but it's a heavy statement. When God himself says, I've checked out everything, there's nothing to fear. Nobody to fear, nothing, zero. Whoa. Tell me, God, one time I woke up and God said, what is this? I said, it's your, it's your word. I said, what is this? I tried to explain scripture, this, this. I said, now I don't know God. I don't know what this is then. I explained everything I, I knew. He said, this is a record of everyone that fought me that defeated them. That's right. Come on. Come on. So this is a record. Everyone that tried to fight me that defeated them. Hear this now. Some people are flowing. Some people are not flowing. So how do we get into a certain level? pal kuskida. How do we get now into this certain level where we have a certain ability to, to move into a dimension where we can be awakened, to move into a dimension? Hear this. Notice what everything that has been happening. I, I shared with some people a 1960 clip of William Marion Branham. We is talking about a woman that shall be a vice president mm -hmm. or a president of America. Right. He said, you young people, write it down. He knew he wasn't going to be there. Mm -hmm. That's 
right. <laughs> he said, you young people write it down because that says the spirit of the Lord. And if this thing does not come to pass, I'm of the devil and I'm not a real prophet. Mm. That's what he said. Say, young people, write it down. You will confirm it later. And what did he say? He said, for I see a lady standing there, mm. being put in as the vice president or president, wearing purple. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and he says, the number is 13. If you understand prophecy by any means, you understand that this lady is number 49, the vice president. Four plus nine is 13. Yes. Don't worry, don't go, don't go there. Now, now, you understand he's telling you she'll be the vice president or a president and she'll be wearing purple. Mm. If you are clever, you would know where to look for the purple. You don't look at one of the out, you know, the the um, the the outfits later on the, the outfits after five days. No, <laughs> you know exactly it is a monumental time where you are going to see that purple and boom, she's there, inauguration. And look at the person who gives their prayer, a man who says, uh, prays for everything, and at the end of praying for all these, uh, for the president and the vice president inauguration, he says, in the strong name of our collective faith, amen. Huh? Not one person on that inauguration mentioned the name of Jesus. First time in the history of America, where the name of Jesus is banned. What causes men in 1960s, who died in 1965, to be so correct about our year? That means God has gone to the future yes. and seen it and brought the virus back to the men. Yes. Like Moses would go to the New Testament, mm. grab the finger of God, drag it to Pharaoh's days. <laughs> yeah. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. Hey. Until the magician said, no, no, he's now breaking rules. He is using the finger of God. You will break rules this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will break rules. Your rules will be from a God kind of level. Their rules is a flesh kind of level. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. I, I talk about my mentor when he, yeah, my mom, mentor, Pastor Chris, when he had a, a wound and the whole skin went back like this. And he's sitting there with people and he said, the people are trying to say, well, well, sorry, sorry for what happened. You know, because we, he just went like this, said, wait. And he went like this on top of it. Skin new. Yeah. What are they using? Hey. There is an awakening in them. Hey, come on. Yeah. There is a setting rising. They go from one level to the other. They are getting overdosed by the spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> But that overdosing can only take time. When you take time in the spirit of God, when you take time, mm -hmm. uh, when you take time with God, mm -hmm. yes, sir. that's when you can get. See, it seems like, you know, when we preach, we are just preaching a certain message. And I'm about to finish. Uh, we just preach a certain message to make you excited, to make you happy, to make you so, so overjoyed that there is something. No, I preach something I've experienced. So that you grasp, you get a hold of it and use it for your own life. I'm not in this thing to preach, just to preach. I'm not in this thing to say a good message. I'm not in this thing for money. If I, if I was in this thing for money, I would have left it way back. By some of the offerings you people give. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I would have gone, like, leave it alone. No, there is a certain level, a certain level. Oh, a calling is a pool, brother. It's a pool, sister. It's a pool where you feel it. You, you know you are being dragged to another level. You, you, you want to go this direction, but it's a pool. Yes, sir. So whether it's hot, it's cold, you stay in. You dig in the more. The more they fight you, the more you dig in. Yes. yes sir. This thing, I can't leave it. Amen. No. I can't leave ministry. You can't leave preaching. There is a certain level, brothers and sisters, that when God begins